Okay. So this is a video abstract for a paper on Tirosen's problem, uh, which reports joint work that I did together with Volker Scholz from my group. And uh, it's about a problem that appeared on the list of open problems that we maintain in Braunschweig for some years. It's actually number 33 on that list. And um, since my group is moving from Braunschweig to Hanover, it will in the future be available somewhere under this address, but also under Quantiki. So we plan a major overhaul of this problem list so that you can, there is more interactive elements and you can make comments without going through the moderators of that list. But there will also be um, a, part of the, a part of the problem site where there is a citable problem that cannot be changed by anyone and so that you can refer to these problems and say, I solved that one. Okay, so number 33 uh, is a problem posed by Tirozon. Actually, the history of this posting shows that we were not really very efficient in maintaining this list. He sent this to us in 2006 and it was a long time until we actually put it on the, on the list. So he, he also posted it on his own website. And uh, so uh, let me describe the problem. So it is a problem about correlation inequalities. And so, the, so as always, we have some source and particles going right and left. There will be Alice and Bob doing experiments on that. And uh, the, the setting is that they will have a certain number of observables available, each of them. And uh, they, each of these observables have, has a certain number of outcomes. So they can measure correlations of all kinds. And then some linear combination of these correlations is a quantity we would like to bound. Now, the tr one traditional subject here is Bell inequalities in which you look for the largest value such correlation expressions can have in an arbitrary classical theory, in a local classical theory. But another uh, group of problems comes from looking at the maximal value such correlations have in a quantum theory. And this is what Tirosons, actually the largest value then um, defines a Tirosons type inequality. So for CHSH inequality it says that you, uh, the maximal value you can get is twice the square root of 2, so this is well known. But we look at more general problems like that. Now it turns out that there, is a, that there are two options in the formulation of what Alice and Bob can control in these problems. And it's not clear whether they give the same maximal values. So one option is to say that we have a tensor product of Hilbert spaces. And everything that Alice measures is an operator on this. And everything that Bob measures is an operator on that. And then you ask what is the maximum possible violation or maximum possible value of such a correlation. And the other possibility is somewhat more abstract. Well, all the operators of Alice commute with all the operators with uh, all the operators of Bob, and now if we only assume that, so we have two algebras of observables and they commute element-wise, then we can ask a similar question. And uh, Tirasson asks whether these two maxima will be the same. Um, he shows himself that if these, if everything is finite-dimensional, then they must be the same, um, and suggests that in situations where you can have commuting algebras which are not representable as a tensor product, there may be a difference. And uh, this is actually the case for, for Neumann algebras. So when A and B are type 2 or type 3 for Neumann algebras, not of the type 1, which is like all bounded operators on the Hilbert space, then there may be a difference. So what we point out in this little note is that um, it seems more not so much a question of the von Neumann algebra types, but of another type kind of property of von Neumann algebras, which is the finite dimensional approximability. So to what extent these things can be approximated by finite dimensional algebras. And there is a host of mathematical features that have been discussed in the literature that are related to this, like nuclearity for Caesar algebras, hyperfiniteness for von Neumann algebras, or injectivity and various other things. And uh, so um, they could actually make a difference here. We, we do not solve the problem, actually, but we show that it's 
related to find these approximation properties. It should be an interesting field of study also for, for, for anybody with a, uh, with a liking of functional analysis and infinite dimensional things. It, it is certainly an interesting challenge.